Hey guys, what's up? I'm Christian and welcome to my bedroom and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing a little something different. We're doing a story time. I don't do these a lot. I mostly focus on makeup, but you know, once in a while I like to tell a little, you know, story of my life. I did take a poll on Instagram. You guys want to hear about when I got caught doing drugs by my parents or do you want to hear about when my boyfriend turned gay on me? And the gay boyfriend story was the winner. I kind of feel like the reason that won because a lot of people who voted for that knew me back in that during this time. You bitches are just nosy and you guys want to know what the tea is. And you know what? I am here today to spill all the details to you. If you're one of the nosy bitches, might as well support your girl and hit the subscribe button. I will greatly appreciate it. I was really trying to make some like cute little makeup look for this video, but it really didn't turn out how I wanted it, and I really don't think it's that cute. So don't come for me and know that I know it kind of looks shitty. But I was really not about to sit there and redo it again, so I was like, whatevs, this is what you're gonna get. I met Chris in December of 2007, and we immediately hit it off. We had a very strong, very like, loving relationship, and we were together for five and a half years. Very long time. I mean, from 17 to 22, like, yeah, it was a long time. Everyone knew us as like two peas in a pod, like we were best friends, like we were a package deal. Like if you saw me, you saw Chris. If you saw Chris, you saw me. We did everything together. We got into trouble together. We were raving together. We started a little company together and we did that for three years and we were just inseparable. I wasted five and a half years, like my youth, 17 and 22, like the best hoeing years. Just kidding. I wasted a good chunk on my youth on him. And maybe it wasn't such a waste, you know, lessons learned, we did have good experiences, a lot of good things happened, but sometimes I still look at it that way. He could have spared me. I thought we were going to get married. I thought we were going to be together forever and that just didn't happen and there was nothing I can do about it. Throughout our relationship, everyone kind of always thought maybe like Chris was like gay or at least like bi, but everyone wholeheartedly believed that he did love me and I believed it too and I think he did love me. I kind of looked at it as he loved me for me and not because of my gender. There was warning signs throughout the whole relationship, like that things that I overlooked. I think part of the reason I just overlooked him, I was like naive and in denial and insecure and lonely. I didn't have a very good relationship with my family and so I really felt like Chris was the only one that like really loved me and I didn't want to lose that. In the beginning of our relationship, probably not even a year into it, or maybe a year into it, he, uh, we like broke up or like took a break or like whatever. It was a very short lived, but he had friends at his house. I went over there for like a little bit and left early. And the next day he had called me and he told me that he had hickeys all over his neck and they were from our friend Xavier who was gay. I was sad and I was upset about it and like I did feel like betrayed. But I like got over it pretty quickly and I still like, you know, I got with them and we stayed together obviously for years and years after. The whole thing that happened with my friend Xavier, like he didn't really tell me the whole truth. He was just like, oh, we made out and then that was it. And I just believed him and I didn't really like question much of it. I, he like told me more details about it like later down the road. I just went with whatever he said. Later in a relationship, probably like a year or a year and a half before we actually broke up and we had a party at our house like I mean not like a huge party we had like friends over we you know we were getting drunk eventually I was like drunk and I just went to my room and I passed out well I woke up in the morning and he wasn't in bed with me so I kind of looked around the house cuz and I was like oh he probably just passed out somewhere else he was in the bedroom next door which was our roommate which is his cousin Andy was his bedroom and he was like passed out on the floor so I walked in there and his phone was next to him and I clicked the screen on so that I could see what time it was and when I did that it opened up to Grindr. If you don't know what Grindr is, it's like a dating slash hookup app for gay people. 
I woke him up and it was like 7 o'clock in the morning. I was like, well, first I was like, why are you in here? And then second I was like, why do you have Grindr on your phone? And he was just like, oh, I don't know. I was just drunk. And I was like, well, take it off your phone. And he's like, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't even like, I didn't push it after that. I just was like, okay, and left it at that. I didn't even care. I mean, I cared, like, and it did cause some concern for me, but I was, like, so insecure and back then that I just left it at that. Like, I was not ready to, like, disrupt my life in the way that it was going. So, I just, whatever. Throughout our whole relationship, we had like, a very loving relationship, like a normal couple. Um, it was, like, the last, the very last year of a relationship that we did kind of, like, distance ourselves. Or not, like, really distance, but, like... There wasn't like a loving connection as much, I guess you could say. I kind of blamed myself for that because like I mentioned, we had like a little clothing, we had a little company that we started together and we made raver clothing. And I was so focused on that and like building that up that I kind of just didn't really put a whole lot of effort into the relationship. We would just spend all day every day making outfits and clothes and that's what we would focus on. And then like when we would give ourselves off days, we would hang out and party with our friends. Well, let's just get to the day that everything went down. I just finally called it out. It was in July of 2013. Remember, it was a Friday. Um, we had invited a bunch of friends over because we had a pool. So we're like, we invited a bunch of friends over to come over and swim and drink. And he had gotten like a day job. So he was just doing like the sewing stuff on the side and during the day he would deliver flowers. So he came home from work, we we're drinking, we we're partying. Uh, somehow my phone broke and I was like, what the fuck? Cause like there was no cracked screen, there was no nothing. And I was just like, whatever. I was like sitting in my room and my friend Mondo was sitting on the room with me and I was like trying to figure out my phone. I was like, whatever, it's fucked. So Chris walked in and I was like, hey Chris, let me see your phone. Cause I was gonna call T-Mobile and order a new one. He was like, no, why? And he like walked out and I was like, okay. Like I didn't really understand why. And then he came back like 10 minutes later and threw his phone at me. Like I was sitting on the bed, so he just like threw it to me and I was like, okay. Ordered a new phone, like it was all good. And when I was done, uh, my friend Mondo was still sitting on the floor with me and he's just like, oh, you should go through his phone. I was like, I'm not that kind of person. Like I don't need to go through his phone. Like I don't, like I don't want to do that. He's like, no, just do it. Like see what he's looking at and see what he's doing. And so I was like, fine. I looked through his phone and like everything was cleared. Like web browser history was clear. Like all the apps were closed. Like I, it was just like cleaned out. I was like, mm, okay, and I was just like, well, it's like, there's nothing, like, it, there's nothing there, it's fine. Like I said, we were all partying and drinking, and we lived down the street from this bar, so we would just, like, walk there sometimes, so, like, a bunch of us decided to just walk there. He DJed at the time, like, he would DJ some of the local raves sometimes, and he would always just, like, DJ at our house for fun, so he was doing that, and so I just left him to do that, and I just walked over with our friends to the bar, and I took his phone with me. After being at the bar for a while, he walked in and he was just like, why didn't you tell me you were leaving? And I was just like, you were just doing your DJ thing. And he was just like, okay, well, give me my phone. So I did. And we were all sitting there and it was like a bunch of guys. It was like our guy friends who we were all talking about and like they were like talking about what kind of porn they watch. They all walked away and I was just standing there with Chris. And I was like, so Chris, what kind of porn do you watch? And he's like, oh, you know, girls. Okay, what dude that you ask, straight dude that you ask when you're like, what kind of porn do you like? They're not going to be like, oh yeah, girls, because automatically you'd be like, bitches, yeah, they're like, you know, like, I like big titty porn, or I like, you know, fucking watching bitches take it up the ass, or whatever. The Latina big booty hoes, whatever it is. They're not going to be like, oh yeah, girls. And no, I was like, be honest with me. I was like, what kind of porn do you watch? She's like... I watched girls and I was like you're lying to me like just tell me the truth and he's like if I tell you the truth you're gonna be mad at me and I was like well just tell me anyway and he's like I watch guys I was like because you're gay and he's like yeah and immediately it was like this big old emotional thing we immediately left the bar 
and walked back to my house and we like locked ourselves in our bedroom and like it was I cried my fucking eyes out I was heartbroken I knew that he was gay but I was just in such denial because I really felt like he loved me I really believed it I felt it like I felt that he loved me and I, he did as we're getting older and I think as like he was discovering who he is and growing like I just feel like that part of him like he wanted to explore that side of him he wanted to just you know come into his sexuality but he loved me and he didn't want to hurt me we like cried we like talked about it you know it's like sad and pathetic but like I begged him to not like I was like please just like you can just love me like I begged him for it to like not be true and it's like really pathetic to look back on that now to beg someone to like still love you and be with you he did love me but the, the love the kind of love that he had was like shifting he was my rock and I you know we had built this world together and it was just like completely like flipped upside down I felt ashamed I felt embarrassed I didn't even like tell people we didn't even tell our roommates for like two days because I just wasn't ready I felt like I looked like a fool for like you know going around with this for so many years I pretty much just cried in my room for two days like both of us I asked him to like not see anyone else for a while to just give me some time to like get over it and that fucking didn't happen apparently he had already started talking to some guy before I had called him out on this like it was probably like a week he was talking to some dude I forgot his name he was kind of an asshole he didn't really like me he was talking to some dude like a week before I called him out on the truth like he was wanting to come out and he wanted to tell me but he Chris has no fucking balls like he's such a vagina he didn't have the balls to tell me to be honest with me basically I had this guy kind of coaching him and helping him I guess to like come out to me but it just turned out that I called him out I found that out very quickly and that that hurt and that was like within the first two days that I found that out it was Sunday that I went to my roommate's room which was like one of his other best friends and I was like and I told him what happened and he was just like oh shit and then I think I called my fr friend Tara or he called Tara the first person I told was our friend Candido and then he told our friend Tara who is my roommate now this was such an emotional time for me and there was no way that I was going to be able to repeat the story over and over again to everyone. So I only had told Candido in person and he had only told Tara. And then basically I was like, well, let's just announce it to everyone. He wrote a post on Facebook and you know, he was not really good with words. So I wrote his post for him and we remained really good friends for years after that. Basically, that's just how I decided to face the truth. I don't know what got into me that day, that I was just kind of finally like, all right, that's it. But I grew the balls and was like, the truth has to come out. <laughs> you know, Chris was coming out to his truth and his true identity, and I wanted to be as supportive as I can be. We remained very, very close. We were absolutely best friends for years after that. I ended up moving out of that house and he did too and he kind of just like bounced around from place to place was like staying on people's couches and I moved back home and I lived with my mom for like a month month and a half I got like a regular job I stopped making clothes eventually he's just like I need somewhere to live and like I don't have anyone to be my roommate let's just be roommates like it'll be fine and I was like all right like let's be roommates we ended up getting an apartment in Tempe and we lived together there for like three months and then he moved out on me because he met um, this guy Connor who was really awesome they were like I think they were together for like three years like boyfriend was really awesome we were all friends you know we moved on with our lives I don't talk to him anymore uh, we ended up going different paths he did move to California for a while and I don't really know what he's gone into and it's not really my business to say but we have lost touch once in a great while I'll hear from him like the last time I spoke to him was like six months ago 
that's how everything went down. I look back on it and I just realize like how naive and insecure like it's kind of like sad that I would just like accept that I don't really know it's a weird situation it's not like a situation that happens to like many people if you enjoyed my story time it wasn't like you know I'm like more comedic I would say and more like silly and funny in my like videos and this just isn't really one of those it's like sad but whatever but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know. Hit the like button if you do. Subscribe to my channel. Next time, I'll do another story time. I'll tell you about the time that I got caught doing drugs. That was a really wild night. And honestly, that story is way more entertaining than this story. I'll see you guys on another video. Bye.